In this video, we will talk about FPTAS. FPTAS stands for Fully Polynomial Time Approximation Scheme, which sounds quite complicated. But don't worry, the concept behind it is simple. An FPTAS allows finding approximate solutions to problems that are difficult to solve optimally. For instance, we can find solutions which are at most 5% worse than the optimal solution. And it gets even better. An FPTAS allows for finding approximate solutions arbitrarily close to the optimal solution. So for example, only 1% worse than the optimal solution. And we can choose this percentage as small as we want. Let's consider the knapsack problem to illustrate how an FPTAS works. In the knapsack problem, we are given a set of items. We will use fruits as an example. Each item has a weight and a value. We want to pack items with as much value as possible into our knapsack. But, of course, we can't carry everything. Our knapsack has a weight limit. In our example, it is 200 grams. This probably seems like a tiny knapsack, but it's only an example. Pause the video for a moment to decide which fruits to best put in the knapsack. In this example, the maximum value we can fit into the knapsack is 25. There are two possibilities of achieving this. Either by choosing the apple and the orange. Or by choosing the strawberry and the grapes. For larger examples, this problem is really difficult to solve. Finding the optimal solution is NP hard. That means, it is not possible to compute the solution in polynomial time. However, in certain cases, the knapsack problem can be solved efficiently using dynamic programming. This technique solves a larger problem by dividing it into many simpler sub-problems. For the knapsack problem, we can use sub-problems of the following kind. Only using the first three items, what is the minimum weight of a subset, with a total value of exactly 15? Pause the video to think about what the answer to this sub-problem is. In our example, the lightest subset with value 15 consists of the apple and the strawberry. Together they weigh 110 grams. The only other possibility for a subset of value 15 is choosing only the orange. But this is heavier. For dynamic programming, we solve all sub-problems of this kind for all relevant parameters. The results can be put into a table. Here the entry in row I and column J contains the result of the following subproblem. What is the minimum weight of a subset of the first I items with a total value of exactly J? For instance, the result of the subproblem we just solved would be entered into the third row and the column for value 15. If there is no subset with that exact total value, the entry in the table is infinite. Take a moment to think about how this table helps us solve knapsack. Given all values in the table, how can we find the answer to the knapsack problem? Since all four fruits can be used in the knapsack problem, we look at the last row. In this row, we look for the rightmost entry that is not larger than the capacity of our knapsack. In this case, this is 190 grams. The value of this column is the maximum value of a subset of the fruits that fits into the knapsack. So the answer is 25 in our example. Now we know how to solve knapsack with the entries of the table, how do we compute them? We can fill the table row by row, starting from the top. The values in each row can be computed from those in the one above. And the first row with only one item is simple to compute. Let's explain this in detail with an example. Some rows have already been filled into the table. Using these, we now want to compute the entry highlighted here in yellow. In other words, we want to find the lightest subset of value 25 using all four fruits. How would you do this? Pause the video to think about this for a moment. From the third row, we already know the best subsets using only the first three fruits. Adding the grapes to the mix, we have two options. Either we include the grapes in the subset, or we do not use them. If we don't use the grapes, we are just looking for the lightest subset, using the first three fruits. This result can be found in the table in the cell above. As the second option, we can also use the grapes. This would already give us a value of 20. So only 5 is missing, to reach 25. Hence, we need a subset with value 5, consisting of the first three fruits. 
checking the table shows that the lightest such subset weighs 30 grams. Adding the weight of the grapes gives us 190 grams. Since we can choose the better of the two options, the result is the smaller of the two values. Note that the computation we just did only requires a constant number of steps. In particular, it does not depend on the number of fruits. So the runtime of this algorithm is linear in the size of the table. In our example, we had a small table since all values of the fruits are multiples of 5. Unfortunately, we will not always be this lucky. This leads to the table having many more columns. In general, the size of the table grows exponentially in the number of items. So how can we make sure the table does not become too large? Maybe we can slightly change the values of the items so that the table has fewer columns. This is exactly the idea of our FP task for the knapsack problem. We will slightly round up the values of the items. For example, we can round all values up to the next multiple of 5, as seen here. In general, we can do this for any k we choose. Rounding the values will lead to a smaller table. But of course, rounding also means that the solution we find might not be quite optimal. If we choose a small k, the solution will be more accurate. But the table will be smaller if we choose a large k. By choosing the right k, we can create an FP task for knapsack. Before we go into more detail, let us first formally define an FP TAS. For any epsilon greater than zero, an FP TAS provides an algorithm with two properties. Firstly, the algorithm is a 1 plus epsilon approximation. For example, assume epsilon is 5%. Then this means that the algorithm produces a solution that is at most 5% worse than the optimal solution. An FP task provides an approximation for any epsilon greater than zero. For instance, it can find a solution that is only a hundredth of a percent away from the optimum or even only a millionth of a percent. This is what we meant at the beginning of the video when we said that an FP task can approximate the solution arbitrarily close. The second property of the algorithm is that its running time is polynomial in n and 1 over epsilon. Naturally, the better we want to approximate the solution, the higher the running time will be. Better approximation means smaller epsilon. And this means, 1 over epsilon will grow. The second property guarantees that the running time only grows polynomially in 1 over epsilon. If the algorithm runs polynomially in n, but not necessarily in 1 over epsilon, the scheme is no longer an FP TAS. Instead, it is then only a polynomial time approximation scheme, or P TAS. Let us now go back to our rounding schemes for dynamic programming. Is this scheme an FP TAS if we choose the right K for rounding? We start with an arbitrary epsilon greater zero and check the two properties of an FP TAS. First, we check the runtime. We know that it is linear in the size of the table. But how large is the table? Of course, the size will depend on a few parameters. Namely, the number of items, n, the largest value of an item, v max, and the value k, we round up to. Take a few moments to try to estimate the size of the table yourself. When there are n fruits, the table has n rows. What about the number of columns? All fruits together are not more valuable than n times the largest value of a fruit. So we only need to have columns up to this value. Furthermore, after rounding to multiples of k, we only need to check every value divisible by k. So the number of columns is n times v max over k. By choosing k as shown here, the runtime becomes n cubed times 1 over epsilon. This is clearly polynomial in n and 1 over epsilon. Note that the choice of k was not only made to ensure the runtime property, but already has the approximation property in mind. Checking how well our scheme approximates the optimal solution is a bit more involved. Let S be the set of fruits our rounding algorithm suggests as a solution. The value of the solution is given by this sum. We want to show that this sum is not a lot smaller than the optimal solution. Since we rounded up to the next multiple of k, the differences to the rounded values are at most k. The rounded values are denoted by vi hat. Next, we dissolve the parentheses in the sum. Furthermore, the size of the set S is at most n. Now we insert the term for k and simplify. The sum in the rightmost expression is the optimal solution of the problem with the rounded values. 
and since we rounded up, this must be larger than the optimal solution for the original values. For the value of the optimal solution to the original problem, we write v star. Finally, note that this optimal solution is always at least v max, since we could always only place the most valuable item in the knapsack. If it didn't fit into the knapsack alone, the item would not need to be considered. The inequality we have derived shows that the value of the FP TAS solution is nearly as big as the optimal solution V star. Let's briefly summarize what we've learned today. In this video, we introduced fully polynomial time approximation schemes, short FP TAS. An FP TAS allows us to approximate difficult problems arbitrarily well in polynomial time. As an example, we looked at an FP TAS to solve the knapsack problem. Thanks for watching this video.